this one's for all of you lovebirds out there. Happy February! Happy February, you guys! Um, this is for all of you lovebirds out there. Every Wednesday, February, I will be doing a film review on a romantic movie that I am going to watch, whether it be a new or old one. So please, please, please come back every Wednesday, February, for a new romantic film review so you guys can snuggle up and the baby out all nice and, and wonderful with your boo. Um, it's me, Danny. I love you guys, and welcome back to another film review here on Woodland Film Reviews. Um, but like I said, getting right into it, welcome to February, the month of love and change and black history. And I might throw a grandpa at you. Um, maybe once in a while, maybe every Friday in February, I will post a new black history um, related video uh, film review like I could watch Selma I could watch Malcolm X let me know in the comments below what you want to see in February from me whether it's a romantic movie or a movie about black history or a movie about just with a all black cast in general um, and I will watch it and review it on Fridays Wednesdays will be April, a romantic movie for in honor of Valentine's Day. Um, and I could possibly be releasing some skits this month about romance and love and all that good stuff. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? First romantic film in February is called In your eyes in your eyes is one of the best romantic movies i've seen in a while it's a spelled as a fantasy drama so um but it's also a romantic movie because it's one of those that gets you right here in the feels um it stars Michael Chateau David. I know I am screwing that name up so badly. I am so sorry. He stars as Dylan and Zoe Kazan stars as Rebecca or Becca, whichever one you want to call it. Um and in the movie, these two seemingly unconnected people um one lives in Arizona one lives in New Hampshire I believe they are connected on a deep telekinetic telepathic level um and they can see each other feel each other and even hear and talk to each other through this connection and they start to feel it when they're like eight years old and in elementary school. Now remember, one's in Arizona, one is in New Hampshire. So, um, throughout the movie, they are talking and get, um, at the beginning of the movie, they start to feel this connection with each other. Um, they don't know about it. Each other think, one thinks the other is just, they think that they are crazy, okay, until they get to be grown adults, she's married, he's an ex-con, I'm going to leave that there, um, and they, the connection really strengthens somehow, um, I guess through emotional distress, they just, the, I don't know strengthens and they are once again able to hear and they're now able to talk and speak to each other and see each other's worlds so he can see her life she can see 
his life. Um, and it's an incredible movie. Um, I, I definitely fell in love with this movie. Um, so I'm a little bit biased, but I'm trying not to be <laughs> in this review. This review is going to try not to be biased for anything. Um, now, the way this movie is shot, um, they, they, this movie was written by Joss Whedon. You know Joss Whedon. You know Joss Whedon, the mastermind behind Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That's all I should say. But if you don't know who Joss Whedon is, pause the video, go look him up. I will sit here and I will wait. Um, but the movie is written by Joss Whedon. It is directed by Brian Hill. And I absolutely adore this movie. The cinematography that this movie was shot in um the color tones they used tell you where the person is and who you are actually looking at um for dylan's character the, it's more of a red tone for rebecca's character it's a bluish tone it's both it's winter time in both places but in order to distinguish who, where you are, um, to keep you oriented because these two characters don't physically get together until act three of the movie. Um, they use color tone to signify where this person is. Like I said, Dylan has more warm, um, tones um to say that he's where he is in New Mexico it's warm it's a little sunny it's definitely warmer <laughs> than where she is where the tones are more blue and cool and you get the sense that she feels frigid and alone in her world um Like I said, he's an ex-con, so the things going on in his world is that he's on parole, he's being watched by his parole officer, and his parole officer is a jerk. I mean, I have yet to see a movie where this particular actor is not playing a jerk in some way, shape, or form. They have typecast this poor guy into being a jerk. And I have yet to see a movie where he is not a jerk in some way. Um, and in Rebecca's world, she's married, but she's married to a doctor who is very controlling. Um, at some point he tries to even lock her away at a mental institution. Who does that? Apparently this jerk face does it. So you see this, you see the colors reflecting their lives. Um and and that helps you distinguish who you whose life you're watching when in the film and at the end of the movie, you see the color tones kind of come together, and it's beautifully shot when they finally meet each other. Um, and then, like I said, with face to face, he does this whole dramatic thing where he goes to rescue her, and this is definitely one of those movies where if you like cheesy romance, but you don't like the big time blockbuster romances but you love small independent films this is definitely one this actually won an award from the Tribeca Film Festival so this is definitely this is like one of their suggested movies this movie is awesome um, now something that I do have to say is 
I do not like the doctor. The doctor husband. Um, I like the actor. I do not like the character. The character is very really harsh, judgmental. You can tell that he emotionally abuses his wife and that's never a good thing. That is never okay. Um, he puts his wife down and then he comes back and says, Oh honey, you know I'm only doing it for your own good. Why did you embarrass me like that? It's not like she can help it. You know, and he's just, he's a jerk face. Um, I do not like the parole officer. Um, one, I do not like the fact that this guy is typecast as a freaking jerk in every single movie that he's in. Secondly, he's just a, he's just a dick. <laughs> There's no nice way of putting it, he's just a dick. Um, I do not like the fact that he's a dick, but he's just a dick. Just put that out there and say it right now. He's just a jerk, a doodle head, a just whatever you want to say. Um, he's not a cool person. Um, I do not like the fact that they say that they have this dude running around in tank tops and short sleeves with no jacket on in New Mexico. My understanding is New Mexico in the winter time is still chilly. This is not, it's not a summertime thing in New Mexico in the winter time. So it's, it's still pretty chilly out there. I mean, you still have to wear your hoodie or a sweatshirt or something, some kind of long sleeves on your body. You're not running around in, in short sleeves all day long in New Mexico. So they kind of got that kind of kind of wrong. Um, if you are, uh, it, it's the age of cell phones and technology, and I can completely, um, I, I, the fact that people are staring at them. Well, she has the foresight to use her cell phone to throw off people from her talking to herself um, which is essentially what they're doing when they're talking because like you hear my voice and I'm talking to you that's exactly how they are talking to each other they are talking out loud to each other this is not a telepathic thing where they talk in their minds no they are literally talking to each other vocally um, so she has the foresight to use a cell phone, but the problem with that is, in order to make it believable, they left out one thing. Earbuds. Freaking earbuds. Get the woman a pair of earbuds. You got her with her cell phone on the table, talking like she's talking to somebody on the phone, but you don't have earbuds in her ear. Get the woman some freaking earbuds and it'll look more believable. Um, he's, it's understandable that he looks crazy. He's an ex-con talking out loud and he looks incredibly nuts. That's actually kind of understandable and sort of forgivable, I guess, but you can't get a boy a freaking cell phone to sit there. Even, even like a little dippy flip phone from like 2007. You know, so he can have up to his ear and talk and pretend like he's talking to somebody on the phone when he's really talking to this woman in his head. Um, you have scenes where they're trying to communicate and be in each other's lives. Um, I mean, they can break the connection at any time with each other, but, and bring it back, but there are scenes where the connection really should not be there. Um, like, she's at, there are two different parties where she's nosing in on, like, one scene, she's at a dinner party, and it's like a very important dinner party, and she's nosing in on his date with this other girl. Um, something happens, she sees it, she reacts, 
and everybody sees it. Like, oh god, this woman just had like a freaking breakdown. What's going on? Um, but that is actually an inciting incident that propels the plot point for the final act of the movie. So that's understandable. Um, the other thing that started the other inciting incident in this that um, started the entire plot of the movie was she was at another party <laughs> um, and homeboy gets hit with a board and she feels it and she falls out of the chair and she and she has to make up something like oh I was having a seizure or I had a back spasm or something and I can understand how her reactions her reactions are actually what sets the plots that set the plot points in motion for each part of this movie and it's really unique to see that happen because at the beginning of the movie you see this connection starting and it's the incident that happened with her that he began feeling the connection and it's it's pretty it's a pretty interesting pretty awesome movie um it's a unique story um that's what i like about it it's a unique story you very rarely see any stories that were told in this way you know you have two characters how that have this connection they talk over a series of I'm guessing weeks or months um, and they fall in love the connection is there it's irreversible it's deep they fall in love with each other um, and you know that they are in love with each other um, so how are they going to get together one's on one side of the country the other one's on the other side of the country how are they going to get together this is this is and basically watching this movie and watching the other movie I did a review on face to face um, you see this sort of similar thing happening in the other movie except for it's done with more technology instead of a supernatural fantasy thing um, this movie makes you believe in the possibility of soulmates and actually make you kind of envious that you and your boyfriend or you and your girlfriend can't do this with each other um, and then you try really really hard to get this same kind of connection so that if you so that if the battery runs out of your phone you guys can still talk just with your minds across distances it would never be unique it would be awesome yes um I know I certainly would, would appreciate that very much um kidding um so scale here I'm gonna try not to be biased but I can't make any promises this movie is awesome this movie has wonderful cinematography wonderful coloration um wonderful storyline very unique they have some characters that are complete jerk faces and make you just go why um why are you here some characters should just go, what are you here? Um, it's definitely one of those make you want to snuggle up with your bunny and just love on each other and eat popcorn the whole time you're watching it. Um, make you appreciate the person that you're with. So I am going to go with a 4 out of 5. This movie is definitely um, it's different from watching a movie in the cinema that is done by Hollywood. Hollywood has this, Hollywood has all of these humongous, 
tropes that go with their romantic movies but this one definitely takes the romantic movie and the fantasy and just flips it around and you see something brilliant and wonderful and unique coming out of this movie. Bravo Joss Whedon for writing a wonderful script. Um, bravo to the director for his wonderful insight and cinematography and the way he shot this movie. Um, bravo to the actors. That is, it's, it's an all around wonderful movie. I am, I 100,000% see why the Tribeca Film Festival um, put it on their suggested watch list. It's amazing. It's amazing. You guys should check it out. Especially since it's February and Valentine's Day and it's a romantic movie. What are you doing with your lives? Grab your significant other. Grab your crush. Sit down and watch this movie. This is definitely not a Netflix and chill movie. It's a Netflix and snuggle movie. Um... So that's all the time I have for you guys. You guys have been wonderful and beautiful. Listen to me ramble on and on about this movie. This movie is awesome. Remember, every Wednesday, February, I'm going to be doing a romantic movie, and I have solidified it in my head. Every Friday, I'm going to be doing a movie that has to do with, at some form or another, African American culture, whether it's a black history movie, whether it's a movie by an award-winning black director, has an award-winning um, African-American cast, something African-American every Friday in February. Um, so come back and check that out on Fridays for a movie review of that nature. Um, you guys are wonderful and beautiful. Click that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you can know when I post new videos. Um, my Patreon page is down there. Please go down there and support this channel through Patreon so I can do more videos, more skits, more short films so I can bring you guys the best of me in Borderland Media. Um, click on the vlog channel. Go check that out. Subscribe to the vlog channel. And become part of the Wonderland Notification Squad. You guys are awesome. I am Danny. This is Wonderland. We have to go back out the rabbit hole, but we will come back again. I am working on some sketch short films, getting into film school. You guys can come with me on that entire journey over on the vlog channel. Um and I will see you guys next time. In the meantime, be kind, be brave, be awesome, be kind to each other, don't bully, learn about your black history, and one, two, three, we're out. We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Mm -hmm.